Welcome to the Status Report highlight for the 6th of December 2016. We have Brian and Merrick on this week, mostly covering the recent improvements in server performance and our final push to have 0.61 out on stable before Christmas. Additionally, Brian provides a bit of insight on the intended Daisy survival experience. We have some exciting news regarding vehicles on experimental branch and share several forum threads that we think you'll find interesting. As many of you may know, we're in the experimental one stable branch iteration phase, on the road to moving 0.61 to stable branch. So, this status report Brian is going to break his part into two. First part covering where we are with 0.61 and what our current critical issues for moving to stable branch are. For the second part, Brian will be talking briefly on his opinion of 0.61 as a build and goals with it as an experience. Now that all of our milestone goals for 0.61 have been implemented, we're currently in rapid iteration phase. For those testing on experimental and stable branch, this means a lot of things can change quickly, not to mention break. Over the last few builds, we've focused on both improving server performance and trying to tackle issues that were caused as a byproduct of work on optimizing client network traffic. While that may be frustrating for those of you excited to try out 0.61, it is absolutely critical for the development process that we are able to iterate and test these changes under a larger load than internal QA resources allow. Additionally, a good deal of critical issues we've been seeing on the experimental and stable branch servers simply do not reproduce internally. Thus, us being able to test through the unstable branch and provide the team with critical crash dumps, debug logs, and profiler data is absolutely required for 0.61 to get the stable branch on Steam as soon as possible. So, the next time you run across a server crash, frustrating bug, or game-breaking issue while testing on experimental and stable, do your best not to get frustrated. Head over to the feedback tracker and give us as much data as you're able to. Every ticket and comment on the feedback tracker helps, even if you might not feel like it does. For stable blocking issues we're currently tracking, Characters twitching, stuttering when crossing rubble and bodies. Client crashes. Some structures not having proper shadows. Items stuck in hand. Server crashes. VoIP too loud. Infected vocalization too loud. Naked characters and silent gunshots. For Brian's second part this week, he'd like to comment on the swing towards survival with 0.61. It is no secret that DayZ set out to be a punishing survival title from the start of the project. Much of the mechanics that would drive this type of experience have been in prototype phase, with the full functionality of them dependent upon technology from the engine, optimization to make them a threat, and so on. Because of that, for the majority of our development period, they have had little impact on gameplay, unless you intentionally sort them out, or a bug related to them caused larger issues, such as the hypothermia issue in 0.60. With this side of the game being present in such a state, most of Daisy's gameplay throughout the early access phase was centered around social interaction and gunplay, with little incentive or push for anything else to occur. As bug fixing, feature implementation, and optimization has allowed us to bring some of these mechanics more to the forefront of gameplay. I fully expect the large portion of the early access player base that might not keep up to date on development to be surprised, and even push back on these changes once they hit Stable Branch. Brian is fully aware that many of you love Daisy for the action you experience when you get into a gunfight or the interesting and often hilarious social situations that player interaction creates. He does not want you to feel ignored. Everything in DayZ should come with a cost, be it struggling to survive, choose to make a beeline for the closest military base looking to pick a fight, or create a farming commune on the coast. The closer we move to beta and early access release, this will become more apparent, and we will of course ensure that all styles of gameplay are as viable as possible, assuming you make the correct decision to overcome the environment that seeks to kill you, be it through starvation, infection, murder, the cold, or being eaten alive by wolves. In our last couple of adventures in 0.61's experimental branch, we've experienced this firsthand, and some of you may have experienced this with us live on Twitch, where we struggled to survive the elements in a heavy rainstorm, causing our clothing to get drenched, catch a cold, and then start dying of hypothermia. On top of that, we had to worry about the infected, which could possibly have taken us out where we were so low on health from the hypothermic state. We managed to get from town to town by locking ourselves inside houses, lighting up a fireplace, which then would give away our position to other players, as our chimney bellowed smoke, and the lighting through the windows and shadows would quite easily give our position away. On top of that, we had the wolves to contend with as well, who always seemed to know the right time to hunt us down and attack. Excited as we are by the slow but inevitable progress to that unforgiving survival experience we set out to create back in 2013, we were all very aware, as you all should be, that this is a development build. Many critical pieces to the final puzzle are still missing, and there will be bugs, but we hope that you will find these changes compelling and enjoy your experience inside Generous even more. Next up, Merrick mentions some server performance improvements, rewriting and updating the strategy of network objects, which had pretty good results, being this part now has about five times faster performance, 
but on the other hand did reintroduce the naked characters bug. Another bug found was with the central economy, where too many infected were spawning over the entire map. This slowed down server performance, but the team has also decreased the simulation rate of distant AR units, so this should help with server performance a lot. But some of these tweaks and fixes will either be coming to Experimental Branch soon, or may be already there as we're reading this status report. But now I'd like to move straight on to vehicles. In the last status report, Marig wrote about two blocking issues. The broken simulation of more players in vehicles is now resolved, but because the server is now authoritative over players' position and movement, new small issues appeared. You won't be able to see some animations like head movement or remote players sitting in the vehicle. We're not planning to fix this in 0.61. We will be taking another look at this issue when the new player controller is merged in, because we want to avoid doing things twice. Client-side correction still doesn't work well, and Merrick is not sure how long it will take to fix. Also, because we would like to release Stable Build before Christmas, we will release 0.61 without vehicles. We will, however, continue releasing experimental builds with the vehicles included when they get ready. We've also made other vehicle simulation in improvements, which will hit experimental. Here's the short list of changes. Dashboard now reacts to switching vehicle lights. Player can now zoom when sitting in the passenger seat. Engine animation now correctly reacts to all user actions, damage, etc. Cars can now be drowned in any water, not just the sea. Working particles from wheels. Updated suspension physics and collision. Cars now drive over small obstacles, based on wheel radius. Suspension along the wheels now correctly reacts to the land surface. The second part from Merrick for this week's status report is dedicated to Infected. We are working closely with designers to tweak them a little bit for 0.61, mainly improving their movement and attacking, but pushing won't be solved, as there is still an issue with the AR units having a new physical controller built on bullet physics, while playing using the legacy armor collision detection. In this case, what happens is Infected penetrates into the player, because it's unstable to find a collision, but player detects that he's in collision with something and moves away from the collision. We won't be able to resolve this without the new player controller, so we're trying to at least improve it by tweaking some movement parameters. And that's all for this week's status report highlight for the 6th of December 2016. There is a load of forum posts as well at the bottom of the status report, so of course I recommend you read the status report in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. The Trello has also been a bit dry since the last load of posts, so nothing new there. I'll keep you guys posted as always. Leave a like and subscribe as it helps the channel out a lot, and I'll see you peeps next time.